Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this beautiful sunset or sunrise, I think, I'm not sure, <laughs> with pine trees. Uh, we're going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. We're going to chat during our live show tonight, so if you've got questions, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, welcome. If you're new to our live stream shows, we're glad to have you with us. And uh, welcome back to all the uh, ones who've come back for more pain. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we're glad to, uh, <laughs> we didn't scare you off. <laughs> uh, we're going to be using a 9 by 12 inch uh, Frederick's Mixed Media Canvas board tonight. And I haven't done anything to it. It's just plain old. You could probably prep it with like a light coat of yellow or something like that. I thought about doing it, but eh, we're, we're just, we'll just do it tonight while we're painting along. Um, I've got a number two, or I'm sorry, two inch Princeton Aspen um, modeler. You're just gonna want a large brush because we're gonna be working fast to get this soft blend in the sky. So you're gonna need a large brush that can kind of, you know, cover a fairly good amount of area quickly. Um, then I've got a kind of another medium sized brush. This one is the bright number 12 from the 6100 series from Aspen. And then for our pine trees, I'll probably be using a fan brush of some sort. I've got a bristle fan here. This is the 10 aught select um, bristle fan. And then I've also got a different stippler for some of the fog. Um, probably going to kind of fog out the bottom of some of the pine trees. So I'm going to be using this brush for that or just kind of a soft fuzzy brush of some sort. And then I've got a couple more detail brushes just for some of the smaller details. I'm not sure if I'll need them all, but I'll mention them as I go. So these are Princeton brushes and Frederick's canvas. Thank you to both of them for sponsoring our videos. They don't pay us anything, but we use their products and we love them. So we give them a shout out. <laughs> we go over the colors. We've got Burnt Umber, uh, Indian Yellow Hue, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Quinacridone Magenta, and ultramarine blue if you don't have all these colors just use kind of similar colors you just want a color that are going to that's going to make um, a nice yellow in the sky so really any yellow would probably do this one's kind of a more golden yellow and then you're going to want some color, sort of color that'll make it um, kind of that reddish glow so some sort of a red or a magenta or something like that um, and I've got these both the quinacridone burnt orange and quinacridone magenta make a really lovely color for our sky I think that those will work well and then we're going to be using these two colors to make our um, kind of like a green and and blue um, you could also use black if you wanted to um, for the trees and I've got um, titanium white and zinc white and then some glass glazing liquid okay I don't know why I'm going over the colors so much here Let me, <laughs> let's get going here <laughs> I'm talking I've been on calls all day so <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> talking talking um all right so i'm gonna mix up with my palette knife about oh probably two and two and a half parts uh to two parts brown burnt umber blue and brown um so a little bit more on the blue side and you can see how nice that that gray is that gets mixed with those two colors it's it's not a you look at those two, you wouldn't think that it would make a really nice gray, but it does. It's one of my favorite grays. And the nice thing about it is that I can make it warmer or cooler depending on how much blue or how much brown I use. So uh, in this case, we're making a cooler gray with a little bit more blue. And I can just kind of pull it on the palette here to kind of see a little bit of those blue tones in there. And that'll probably work really well for me. So I'm going to scoop it up as small as I can, get it, so that I have a nice little small area here to use later on my trees. And then I'm going to clean that off really well because I'm going to have lighter colors, so I don't want to have any of that dark color here. And then I'm going to mix up my, um, my kind of golden color here just so that I can grab it while I'm working. Um, fairly quickly here. So I'm going to grab kind of equal parts of the quinacridone magenta and burnt orange and have that as kind of a, it should be kind of a pinkish, pinkish orange and we'll be adding white to it 
but that'll kind of be my set aside color there and then I'm going to grab just a little bit of it maybe not even quite half of that and bring it over here and I'm going to just squirt in some Indian yellow so I don't get this color into my yellow because I don't want to dirty that color so probably two parts of that to one part of the burnt orange okay so <clears throat> Mix that in. That'll be really good. Okay. So it makes almost like a red. This probably need more yellow, so I'll probably may be using this with the yellow because that's still a little bit on the two red. So probably maybe four parts yellow to one part of the magenta. Yellows don't tend to have a really good tinting strength generally so I should have thought about that before I mix that one but that's all right we'll just add some yellow to it when we get going so we've got a couple of colors here that we can use in our sky we've got our yellow and we're gonna have our white and let's go ahead and spray all of these really well to keep them moist while we're working and then the other thing we'll be using is the um, ultramarine blue but we're going to be using white with it so I don't have to do anything special to it I'm just going to be using it straight so I'm going to start out with white and I'm also going to spray just a little bit on my canvas that will kind of open up the pores get it ready for the paint if you don't do that the paint will kind of skim it'll kind of skip around it won't kind of absorb in there that first coat of paint so spraying your canvas with a little bit of water really is a good like first step for any um, fresh canvas that you haven't painted on yet once you get paint down um, it absorbs a little bit better but right at first you kind of need a little bit of water to help it out all right so adding just a little bit of yellow there i want to keep it fairly pale that looks really good and I'm gonna go ahead and just start yep that's great and I'm gonna go side to side here and fill in the top of my canvas getting a little bit more yellow and I'm gonna go in from the sides with this so I'm just going to kind of go in from the sides and I'm just leaving kind of an area right in here that's going to be my brighter area of my yellow and just streak it across. I do you want to give a shout out to the photographer, this Lori Lohi. He's a photographer we've used several times now, bought a bunch of his photos to use during our videos here and this is another one of his really amazing photos that he's taken. So the link, I think, should be down in the description. If I haven't added it already, I will be after the show. I'll be sure that I have his information down in the description if you want to check out his Instagram page. All right, grabbing some of that. There we go. So that's a little bit closer. I think I'm going to add more of this red, actually. I think I want it more. Yeah, there we go. So I've got kind of an orangey and then I've got this magenta. I'm going to get a little bit of water, just a little bit. I don't want to add too much water to this because it'll just basically wipe off what I've got going on on my canvas. And if this is starting to dry, you'll be able to tell because it won't want to blend. It'll just kind of be sticky. Starting, it's getting close. So I need to be work really quickly and do long, wide sweeping brush strokes. Don't kind of set in one area and try to blend it in because it will just lift off the canvas. So just kind of long sweeping brush strokes. And here I'm just kind of skimming it a little bit in. I'm not pulling and lifting. I'm just kind of flicking it towards the middle to add a little bit of this color. And using the edge of my brush to kind of pull that in. Now that I've got a little bit of that color in there. Try to keep them horizontal. And that'll make them look kind of like clouds. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. 
It's a little bit orange, but I think it I think it works. I might bring it up just a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit low, so I'm gonna try to blend. Let's get a little bit of that orange. I'm gonna get a little glazing medium because that'll help it kind of smooth on now that it's starting to kind of try to dry. There we go. So kind of do um, in between between that yellow and orange. And that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. And what we'll do is we'll let this dry and then we'll probably give it a second coat over the whole thing and just do another layer of the same colors. So well, before this dries, I wanna get this cleaned out as much as I can. If you have another brush this size, you can grab it and start fresh. I'm gonna get the magenta, a little bit of magenta. I got a little too much there, a little bit of magenta and then the ultramarine blue. Mix those two together and then get some white. Really press down to get those that paint kind of pushed all the way through my brush. See, I'm kind of changing direction too. Going back and forth, side to side in different directions to get it worked all the way through. Okay, that looks good. Mm, that's a little bit purple, but It'll work for now. Working quickly. As long as this is still wet right here, that orange is still wet, it should blend a little bit for me. If it's too dry, um, it will lift. So just kind of keep an eye on it. You don't want it to, it's kind of trying to not blend there. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off really good. I'm Are you just beating use a the devil out of damp it? damp brush here. What? <clears throat> very, very lightly here. What? Are you beating the devil out of it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Beat the devil out of it. That's Bob Ross would say. Okay, so that didn't, I don't like that blend, but I'll have to work on it and do a, a second layer once this is dry. So I'm going to get the ultramarine blue. And do just the ultramarine blue. No, no pur purple this time. Probably should have just done the blue instead and just let it blend itself into the pink there. And I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down with this because the pine trees are going to have a little bit of this blue kind of peeking through behind them in places. So I want to be sure that it's all the way down. And it's a little bit tricky because you're going from like an orange to a blue and those are opposite on the color wheel. So you'll tend to get like this gray, which it is kind of gray in our picture. So it's okay to have that, but just make sure that you don't blend too much of this blue and, and orange color together and end up with your sky being all gray. So you just have to kind of keep an eye on that. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna hand this off to Mark, let him dry that for me. And clean out my brush and I'm going to spray my palette here so that I have keep this wet so that I can grab these colors and use them a second time which I don't think we're going to have to do too much blending on here it's going and this one I think is going to be a pretty quick project and I think it's a great project for blending so if blending is something that like you struggle with um, this is definitely one that I would try to practice on um, you can get a canvas and paint on it multiple times um, just you know practice over and over again or you can do it on paper if you do it on paper I would add a lot more water than I'm using here because um, water will like suck the moisture out let me show you what we worked on this weekend we did our bonus video for our patrons and we finished this guy and they cute <laughs> so calling him a boho sheep uh, that's part of our um, patreon program we have bonus videos and um, challenge videos we'll show you the challenge video the bonus videos are the five dollar level challenge videos are ten dollar level so this is the challenge video that we've been working on all month we work on these on thursdays um, during a private live stream for our ten dollar and up patrons and then the 
five dollar bonus videos are once a month on a Sunday um, for this guy, and the folks that the ten dollar folks get to watch the five dollar level videos too, so they get both and traceables. So it's a pretty good deal if you're interested in that. I have links down in the description for my Patreon um, thing. We've got lots going on with them. Thank you, honey. Very good. Okay, so I like that. And it'll dry a little bit darker too, so um, sometimes it's kind of hard to see what it's going to do when you're first doing putting it on there, but once it's dry, you can kind of tell. Okay, so I really like that. It looks really good. Um, definitely need some extra blending up here, um, but I am going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with this brush. It seems to be working all right for me. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and do basically the same exact thing we just did. So get that yellow and white start out with and I kind of ran out of my yellow area it was kind of in the middle there all right there we go and this time I am going to add a little bit more glaze this will be like a transparent um and you can use matte medium just kind of any kind of um acrylic medium that you have that will kind of help give your paint a little bit extra extended workab workability. There we go. So I've got a nice like yellow there. I'm going to a little bit brighter than that. There we go. So I don't want it to be too opaque. Like I don't want it to cover over everything we've already done. I just want to kind of add a second layer to it. I'm going to add my orangey and this time I'm going to try to work pretty fast so that again add that glaze to it and that glaze has a little bit of an extender in it the golden glazing medium. There we go. You see the difference? It's just kind of softening up those blended edges a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of the pink now. And now that I've already got these colors already like pre-mixed over here, it's going to go a little bit faster too for me. So are you using zinc white in there? No. Okay. Nope. Just but you will be using it. I will be using it later when I do the pine trees. Okay. I'm going to be using it for the fog. Excellent. Yes. I used regular titanium white for this because I want it to cover. The zinc white is for like transparent applications, so when I want some of the under layers to show through, I'll use the zinc white. And so that'll that'll be when we do the um, trees, we're wanting to cover over a little bit of the trees with the zinc white mixture so that they kind of blend out and look like fog below them. It's also good for like, you know, clouds or that kind of thing. The zinc white works really well for that. Adding some of this mixture that's got the both of those in it. It's a little bit more of that reddish. And I'm going to do this ab about at the third. So I want to be sure that I have this color because my sun's going to go like right in here somewhere. So I'm going to kind of do a few like trailing trailing clouds coming through and I want to be sure that these are blending if they're starting to feel sticky at all stop do not keep painting on this wall if, if it feels sticky or it's not blending you can feel it kind of grabbing your brush or it'll start skipping you won't see any kind of blend it'll just kind of skip around that's when you know you got to stop and let it dry because um, if you keep messing with it while it's um, in that state, if it's starting to dry, acrylic starts sticking to one another, it'll stick to your brush and they'll come right off the canvas. And you'll end up with a big blotchy mess. So you don't want that. I don't want that for you. So just kind of work quickly. It's better to do more layers. You can work quickly and add as many layers as you need to. So just like work quickly, let them dry in between and then, you know, keep on going to the next layer and, and just so on and so forth. Keep adding more and more layers. You can do this as many times as you want to until you get it kind of where you want it to be. So don't feel like you have to get it done in two or three layers like I'm doing. 
All right, so I'm adding that blue. Instead of mixing together using that purple, I'm just adding the blue and white, the ultramarine blue and white here, because I wanted it to be a little bit higher up with this color. Working quickly across, fast, back and forth. Okay, there we go. And you can see it kind of almost made a green, which is nice. I like it. Okay, where it mixed with that Ooh, pink. Let me get some of this pink. And I'm going to put it right here. And that is starting to dry. You can see it's skipping right there, so I just need to leave it. As much as I want to mess with it and try to make it blend, I just need to leave it because if I don't, it will lift off the canvas. So let me go ahead and while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and add my little sun in here. So I'm going to get my white and a little bit of this yellow. So it's just a little bit lighter than that light yellow that we have already here. And I'm going to put it right about on the third or just above the third here. So if this is my third, if I'm, I'm saying third, you know, just splitting my canvas into three parts, I'm going to come just above it right in here somewhere and do my little sun. And it's not a perfect circle. It's kind of a semicircle, and the bottom of it is sort of smushed a little bit and then fades out into my... So a little bit brighter yellow right at the top there. I'm just going to tap it so that it sticks because that's still wet right there behind it. And then at the bottom here, I want more of that brighter yellow, a little bit more of the brighter yellow. So I'm going to kind of try to add that in. Eh, it's not going to want to stick. Maybe get a little bit of the orangey color. There we go. about halfway up that sun just adding a little bit of that orangey color over the top of it making sure it's nice and bright white so you can see it against that background there we go all right pretty close mm -hmm. we're getting there this is still bothering me right here you can see we don't have a smooth blend right here we kind of have a line it's pretty obvious, so we just have to kind of blend that out. But um, I'm not too worried about that. I think I think we're getting close. I'm pretty happy with the rest of it. I think we're fairly close. I might add a little bit more of that pink up in here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and have to have Mark dry it again for me. Yeah. <clears throat> so Did you already put everything away? Nope. Okay. Did you want to answer the questions? Or you sure, yeah, I can answer questions. So the uh, question was originally, um, how do you get over being nervous about starting in painting? Okay. And, what are some of that? and then somebody wants to know if they don't have zinc white, what could they use? Okay. So um, if you don't have zinc white, you can use titanium white plus a little bit of glazing liquid or water. Um, it won't be as transparent as zinc white, but it'll still work. Um, as far as like how to get over being nervous about painting, I would say um, let go of your preconceived notions of what it should look like. So like when you, you know, when you're starting any kind of new um, skill, you, you know, you would go into painting or, or you would go into like, say, you know, learning to um, ski or learning to play piano or something like that knowing that it's going to take a while for you to get good at it. But for some reason, with art, people think that if they do it the first time and they're just not good at it or it doesn't come easily to them that they just can't do art and that they're not like I have no idea where that started or why because um, it's really only in art that I can think of that people um, you know think that you know that, that that just because like you're just not instantly good at it that you um, shouldn't um, try you know and and uh, and they get embarrassed if you know they do a painting and it doesn't look perfect or however they think that it should look 
Um, and I would just say, like, kind of go into painting knowing that it's going to take you a few months probably, or maybe even a year, or maybe two years, depending on how many hours that you put into it, um, to feel comfortable with it and to get good and proficient at it. And it would be just the same if you were learning to p- play the piano or do any kind of sport or anything like that. It's going to take a while to learn the skills, to get your hand-eye coordination, um, get comfortable using the brushes, using the paints, get comfortable with how much water you need to add, and then, you know, technically, you know, just how to, uh, you know, the colors that you need to do, the color mixing. Um, there's all kinds of things that go into um, painting and learning to paint. And that's why I do these videos, because when I started painting, I was super frustrated. <laughs> I went to college for art. I actually dropped out of my painting class after um, my painting two, number two, because um, I hated my first painting class. I wanted to paint so badly, but... Um, um, the, uh, the professors were teaching art theory and not really teaching technique. And I wanted to learn how to actually do it. Like, how do I do, you know, what I want to do? I knew kind of what I wanted it to look like and I couldn't get it there. And, um, so I had to look up books and basically self-teach myself how to paint over several years and trial and error and that kind of process. So I do these videos because I love to paint. I love to share it with you. And I like to, sh- like, I've been doing this for 30 years now. So it looks easy for me, but it took me a long time to get these skills. And um, just knowing that, I think maybe when you go into it, you know, might hopefully help you to not feel as like um, uncomfortable about, you know, like not being perfect because the more you do, the easier it'll get just like any skill. And also um, the more you kind of give yourself permission to fail at it or just to, you know, pr- produce art that's maybe not that great. What? Check it first. It's fine. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Um, then you you'll have less stress over it. And also the more that you, the more that you do, I think the, the um is is better more oh okay what is what, is, what am i trying to say the quantity is better than quality when you first start learning so do do more and expect, expect less results right at first you know um just practice just do it just do the thing and then um as you get better at it, then you can kind of worry about the exact details. But when you're first learning, um, spending, you know, five hours on one little part of a painting to get it just right is not going to help you as much as just doing it, moving on, doing the next thing, moving on, doing the next thing. And like I said, you can do this sky as many times as you want to, um, to get it to where you want it to look, um, but sitting here and trying to kind of like mess with one little area is not going to um, help you get better as fast as it would just to kind of do the whole painting, get it done, and try again on another painting and, and so on. So um, do as many paintings as you can fit into your schedule. Get yourself some paper to work on so that you don't feel like you're wasting canvases but or paint over your canvases if you don't love the results of you know painting that you've done you know they don't have to all be hanging in a museum and especially like the very first few that you do are probably not going to be great and that's okay like it's totally normal like that's you know doesn't mean that you're bad at art so um, give yourself permission to be a beginner you know all right, I'm off my soapbox. The end. <laughs> it's something I'm very passionate about because I know I have so many people say that they, they can't do art or their art teacher said, oh, they're not good at art or whatever, you know. <laughs> Just because it's a little bit more difficult for you or it doesn't come naturally to you does not mean that you can't do it or that you shouldn't try, you know. And all art is valid. Yep. yep. I've seen some pretty interesting things in some famous galleries that exactly yeah Hmm. Yeah. okay yeah (laughs) exactly yep just express yourself have fun with it give yourself permission to make some bad art before you make some art that's you know you're proud of but hopefully if you start out with these easier projects you're going to have um a better time of it so I'm just doing a little bit more of this reddish color around the edges here so I mention what I'm doing but um, you know the the more that you practice and the, the more time you put into it the faster that you're gonna see results so 
would just say you get out of it what you put into it, you know. And having um, guided um, instruction really, really is beneficial. And that way you're not going to be wasting a lot of time floundering, trying to figure out how to do stuff, you know. Even if it's not something that you are particularly passionate about, don't skip to the super hard stuff. Like, do the easy stuff first. Like, do the easy projects, because I explain more in my beginner projects about the basics of technique and things than I do in my more difficult projects. So, if you're jumping to... I I have comments sometimes from people who are trying to do my, like, four and five hour intermediate projects saying, oh, I couldn't do it, you know. And I'm like, well, like, if this is your first time sitting down to paint, yeah, because you're not going to, you know... I'm mixing more of my blue, just mixing some more of my blue here. Um, you, you've got to um, build up those skills. And um, so don't jump in to do, you know, a really difficult painting. You know, don't, like, try doing a portrait or, like, you know, something like that that's going to take somebody who's been painting for 30-plus years, five or six hours. It's going to take you... 20 hours probably to do it and you probably won't have a great time at it so do some of these projects that are one to two hours and get a few of those under your belt before you try to challenge yourself with some of the harder stuff I would say that that's really important too so you'll have a much easier time of it and you'll have better better results even if it's not something that like you're super excited to paint it'll still be beneficial for you to learn it you know all right, so now I'm going to go over this area with this pink here. And I'm going to go right over the top of that blend. Just want to try to put fresh blue on because I wanted to be sure that I had some blue to blend into. And I'm just going to try to get a soft blend here. There we go. Just back and forth. I'm using a smaller brush. This is the 12 bright because I can kind of work in this smaller area here to kind of concentrate my attack in this area. Okay, I think getting closer. Again, not going to be perfect on the first time. I get a little bit of white. I'm going to go ahead and mix it in with this blue that I had right here and I'm going to pull down from this area now over the top of this. I'm going to even get a little bit of this orangey color here. Okay. Try not to get it up in my sun there. Okay, there we go. And pulling down. So the main thing, I just want a smooth blend here between my sky and my and my part down here. So I'm going to get that yellow that's right here, that yellow color, and I'm going to go over that and pull it down. There we go. Now we're getting that smooth blend. There we go. I'm not seeing the... Okay, I like that. I'm going to pull up a little bit right here with it because it's kind of got a little bit of a like an arc right around that sun. So I'm going to pull up just a little bit around there and then just make sure I've got a smooth blend. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Is it perfect? Mm, probably not, but it's close. It's close. And then what I can do too is if I put too much on, I can kind of take my damp brush and just brush over this. It'll kind of pull off a little bit of it, wipe it off as I go, and it'll kind of blend down and pull off little bits of that paint if it got too thick in one area, but I think it's pretty close, pretty close. I, I don't see that line anymore that we had before, that really obvious line there. And I think our values are fairly good as far as the darkness and lightness of everything, so I'm going to go ahead and call that good. All right. <laughs> How you doing, hon? I am doing great. Good. <clears throat> Got like the best job in the world. Got the best job in the world? Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. 
Mine's not too bad either. I like it. Yeah, I, I get, hang out with you. Yeah, and I get to watch paint dry. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's an engineer if you're new to our channel or <laughs> I'm the artist he's the nerd uh, of the family uh, computer guy Excel sheet you know all of that good stuff and uh, yeah we we didn't uh, we didn't start doing these shows together until... I got desperate and I needed a co-host for my live streams about, I don't know, 2015 or something like that, she, somewhere in there. She, I'm kind of like, you know, we're lining up picking teams. <laughs> <coughs> and like, I'm the last one there. And she's like, is there anybody else? <laughs> that was pretty much how it went. It was, I tried Spencer. Spencer didn't want to do it. Spencer, Spencer did great. Spencer was a great co-host for he, my my youngest son. He did a whole week of shows with me. But oh yeah, the kids series. Yeah, the kids yeah. series. Like yeah, and then I had a friend helping me, but she she got sick. She ended up yeah passing away. So we we uh, not not before the show, but she right. was just she was ill. She couldn't she couldn't make the shows unfortunately. So yeah. I had I had to ask Mark to help me, <laughs> and I really honestly we just you know he wasn't an art guy he didn't you know he would go to art museums with me but it wasn't something that he was passionate about and so I was just like well we'll try it mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's worked out really good all right just adding a little bit more white to my son there I lost my son when I blended back over it a little bit. All right, so I've mixed in some of my the tree color. So this is this that that gray that we used with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I'm gonna spray all this down because I can see it's starting to get dry up there. Um, so added just a touch of it to my blue that's down here, and I'm going to start my trees and make sure my blue's dry before I start this. I want to do my trees are going to be kind of right in this area here. They're gonna kind of do a an arc so my tallest one is going to be like right in here and right over here I'm gonna have two one two three and then I've got a large one right here I'm gonna move this one over a little bit I've got a large one right here that's just offset set that one and then right here I'm gonna have two and probably I should let me go ahead and mark them with chalk if I can do this really 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 lightly because I don't want to mark up my canvas and uh, this paint is very very wet still so I don't I want to go really lightly so I'm gonna go right there I'm gonna go over a little bit and do one right here and I'm barely pressing down here and then I'm gonna go down just a little bit more so these are kind of stair stepping down a little bit right here and then I've got a large one that's gonna be right right in here right in there and then another one that's right here that's kind of overlapping it right there. And then another shorter one that is, so I'm going to move this one over. Move this one over just a little bit so they're not so crowded. Okay, so yeah, they're pretty evenly spaced. So one, two, three, this one's going off the canvas. And then four, these two are closer together than these two. And then one kind of that's sort of in between these two that it comes down this way. And then another shorter one down here. And then one right here, one right here. I don't have to do these exactly the way they're in the photograph, but I do like how they're placed in the photo. So not that he went and placed these trees himself, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I like the composition. So, and then I'm gonna look over here and see kind of how high that one is and go just a little bit higher right here. And I'm gonna come in just a little bit on this. and. Do a nice big one right here. And these tree trunks are going to be straight up and down. I'm kind of not doing a great job of getting them straight, but you get the idea. Okay. Somewhere in there. And then there's going to be two little baby ones that are right in here. And these are the two that I'm going to start with that are the farthest back, the most faded ones. And they're going to be a little bit lower than all of these. So these are all going to kind of come up. Like this, see how they're kind of arcing like that, and then this one's going to be up on this side. So that's kind of what we want right there. Okay. 
So I've mixed a little bit of this gray with my blue that's right here, my background blue. And I'm gonna use that and I want it chested. So I want it to be just barely visible on top of that blue. These are super far in the distance. So there we go. I'm gonna, I lightened it up just a little bit more even. So that's kind of where I want to be, right there. And I'm gonna do kind of a straight line down. These little ones, I'm just gonna use this brush. This is my 3 8 inch angle brush from the Princeton Velvet Touch line. And I'm going to just kind of tap in side to side to create my little pine trees. Like that, okay. And then do, let me bring this one up just a little bit more so it's a little higher than this one. So tapping along that main branch and just make sure that I'm kind of making them random, leaving lots of space in between. And they kind of go up at the top. So these first few that'll kind of go upwards and then um, about third branch down they start to angle down a little bit and then they'll start to kind of point downwards after a bit. Okay so down here I'm just going to get a little bit more of my blue and I'm just going to tap in over the bottom of those trees until they just disappear and then just kind of use my finger to smudge it out so they kind of disappear. Okay. And we'll be adding more blue and more of the of the uh, zinc white to this layer. So this is not going to be the final color. So I'm going to get the little bit darker color for this one here. And this is that big one that's right here. So this is the other one that's kind of far in the distance here. So real quick, what uh -huh. brush was that again? This is the quarter, the three eighths inch angle brush. I'm just kind of using it, tapping side to side to create these little tiny, using the tip of the brush, just creating these little tiny lines. You can use your fan brush if you want to. Do I'm just kind of using this because I've got it in here. <laughs> Being lazy, really, to be the truth, truthful. So have some darker and lighter in here too, so um, we can get a little bit of the darker color, maybe mix up a third color that's got a little bit more of that blue-gray color, and I'm going to go on top of what I've just done and just kind of like in the middle there, add a little bit more of that darker color. See how that worked? And then on these ones, I'm gonna leave these lighter because they're, I don't see a, a lot of the darker color on these. Okay, so then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab that lighter blue and I'm gonna actually kind of blend that out because those, the darker's at the top, not, not at the bottom. And blend out the bottom of it until it disappears. Okay, like that. So use the mid-tone for the main part of the tree, just a little bit darker than this one, and then at the bottom add more of the lighter blue. Again, we're going to go over the top of that with some zinc white to make it more transparent even than it is. So, all right, getting more, and then this time it's a little bit darker, so I'm gonna get more of that darker color. Still got a little bit of that background blue in it, so, and this is just ultramarine blue plus white that we were using for this color. That's what this color is right here in their background. So whatever background color you use, that's what you're mixing in with this. And I'm going to go just a little bit higher. Remember these are gonna be a little bit higher. 
as they go to the side. I'm gonna come down and about right in here, and this is probably too low. About right in here, about halfway down the tree, I want it to start to disappear. Okay. And let's go ahead and do this one, and then I'll switch to my fan brush so I can get that transparent. Those. What am I saying? I want the fan brush so that I can get the little pine tree look. These smaller ones are not as important, but this one, these ones are starting to get bigger and I want to make sure that I have the right kind of brush for it. Okay. So just a little bit of that blue, a little bit darker than these ones. I'm going to start at the top here, tap, 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 upwards at first, and then Get a fairly good amount of paint on here so that you don't have to touch down too hard. The more paint you have, the less, you know, the less hard you have to press to get your brush stroke to show up. Okay, so that's good. And these shouldn't quite touch, so they're kind of mid-sized tree. And right about there, I'm gonna to start to fade it out really good. So I'm gonna get that lighter blue and do the whole rest of this with the lighter blue. Okay, so right about there. Let's get this color again, the darker color. Up at the top, tap, tap, tap. And then side to side on either side going kind of upwards and then as it comes down I'm not loving this brush it's not giving me good straight lines I want to switch brushes a little bit bigger fan brush. Let's see if this gives me better results. <coughs> Does it have like a different name? It's a number two. No, number four, sorry. Number four select. Same kind. It's just, it's not the bristle. It's got a softer, uh, softer bristle. So it'll kind of hold, yeah, hold together a little bit better. That one was like getting too fuzzy for me. I just wanted <coughs> to stay together a little bit better. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so again, pretty quickly, I'm gonna start with the lighter colors. Just and then it's just gonna fade out to. And these are kind of touching right here so these ones these two kind of meet right in there okay This is dry, this one's dry, this one is getting there, but it's not quite dry yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and start to add my zinc white. I need to do this before each new layer because we're gonna have the other trees on top of this layer, so we gotta have to have this zinc white in there. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of the ultramarine blue, and this actually don't want it, this one because it's got the titanium white in it, and I'm gonna clean off a space. So that I can do this. I've got no room to work. <laughs> there we go. I don't think I'm gonna need any of these colors anymore, but I just have that space cleaned off. 
Do you <clears throat> uh, know where this picture was taken? Uh, no, I don't. It's probably in the in the description on his Instagram page. I'm, he he marks them usually, but I don't I don't remember offhand. He's from Norway, I want to say Norway, Iceland area. So he's he travels around that area and takes photos. I was going to say, as far as I know, it was probably taken outside. Probably, yeah, that's a good, good guess. Or it might be a picture of his TV screen. He was watching a show and liked it, so took a picture of it. (laughs) I don't think so. Not. Okay, so zinc white here. With I want to make a. I color as close to this as I can because I don't really want to be creating a new color to have to cover. So I want as close to that blue as I can get it, but this time I'm using the, titan- the zinc white instead of the titanium white. So I just need a tiny, tiny bit of that blue. Zinc white and ultramarine blue. You could use just the zinc white, but what it would do is kind of create you know, the cloudy look, so it'll create a new, a new blue, which is okay too. There we go. So we're going to use that and I'm just going to kind of brush it out. And I want it so that this bottom disappears without any line. And we kind of tried to help it out by sort of starting it with a softer blend here at the bottom. I'm going to get a little bit of that titanium white one because that one will cover a little bit better these darker colors. So right about halfway up and then just tapping to soften up that transition. See how that's working? And you may have to do this a couple of times because this is not covering very well right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more of the zinc white. And again, I can use the titanium white too if I need to. Um, if your zinc white's not covering up enough or if you just have a little bit heavier coverage of your darker paint. Okay, so some there, somewhere in there, but it's still, I can still see that line there. So I don't want that. I'm going to get a little bit more of the ultramarine blue and and uh, titanium white since I kind of lost it over here. I'm going to use that yeah, at the very bottom. See how that's going to really cover because that titanium white is so much more opaque. And so it'll cover up that bottom of those trees and disappear them completely. And I just want it to be really gradual. That zinc white in this area is really important because that's what will kind of give it that soft transition between the between the nothing and the darker colors okay so I like that looks good pull this color down so whatever color you've got here a little bit of the zinc white here I'm going to pull it down so that it's down underneath where I'm going to put these trees because I want to have a nice smooth blend it may be a little bit different than what we've got above so and that's okay just have to make sure that it continues down and we don't have a line of lighter color I mean it it can be a line I mean fog does these kind of lines and things you know weird things so it's not that important but in this project or this picture it's kind of smooth between these trees so we're just gonna do like that Make sure we've got, because this is a little bit lighter than our background color, although it'll probably dry to about the same color since these colors are darker when they're going down, when they're wet. Okay, so doing like that. And 
and I'm using the stippler because I can really like scrub and you don't want to do this kind of thing with a regular brush because you'll ruin it so just have a brush that's kind of a scruffy old brush that you can kind of scrub and get that paint worked in without having to worry about destroying it <laughs> okay I'm gonna just this has nothing on it I'm just pulling off my chalk lines there okay so I'm happy with that they look like they're faded back and they're about the right color and everything looks pretty good so let's go ahead and continue with our next layer of trees and this one up here is actually a little bit got a little bit of pink in it so I'm gonna add a little bit of the pink to my to my gray it's that magenta color that's like right here in the sky. And then I'm gonna add my ultramarine blue and white. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of that because I I keep, I'm gonna mix up a fairly good amount of it so I have it to work with. Okay, so something like that. And this, the picture is kind of a little bit more gray than I'm using. I'm using like a brighter blue. You could add a little bit of the burnt umber or this color to it um, to kind of gray it out a little bit. But I kind of like the like softer blue color. So it's up to, up to you what you want to do with your colors. You don't have to always do it exactly the way you're seeing it um, in your picture. I'm kind of taking a little bit of liberty with the color here and making it a little bit more saturated than is in the photograph. And all right, so I've added a little bit of this red to the ultramarine blue and this gray color. So we've got like a um, probably, I want to say, probably close to equal parts. We'll see how it looks when we put it down here and it may be too dark. No, that looks about right. So, and I might go a little bit more reddish now that I'm looking at it. I might go just a little bit more red at the very top of it. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. I'm just looking at my picture. I actually think I'm a little too high. I don't know how I got that high on that one. I'm gonna go down a little bit. Or maybe you want to bring these ones up. We'll see. Because <clears throat> it's not that much higher than everything else. So I look at this one and go across, straight across. It's about the same height as that one. So it's, it's a little bit lower, kind of right in here. Okay, so let me go ahead and just do my line down. And this is going to get dark. It's going to get dark at the bottom, so I don't really have to worry about the bottom of it. Clean that out. I'm going to switch to my fan brush. Get that kind of light magenta with the gray mixture. Magenta and burnt, burnt orange. This is the magenta and burnt orange. And then we're adding the blue and gray to it. Because it's just a little, getting a little bit more of that pink over here. Okay, again, as I go down, I'm gonna kind of widen out. These ones are still kind of coming upward. I don't know why I'm holding my breath while I'm doing this. Don't hold your breath, Ange. <laughs> be able to breathe you gotta breathe to talk so this is something that we talked in shows in the past another tip about painting is being relaxed mm -hmm. yep the more tense you are the more difficult it yes. is to actually paint yeah so it is you're go. right you're right and, and, and breathing is a key part of probably of staying conscious at least while you're painting. <laughs> okay so in, 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 in order thoughts. breathing <laughs> And not being tense. Relaxed. Relaxed wrist. That goes back to that question about being 
anxious, you know, being anxious about painting. So, yeah, if you feel like you're getting anxious, like stretch, do, you know, pull back on your wrist here. That's a good stretch for your forearm here. They can get kind of tense and tight. I did that. I, I really should have done that before the show. That feels good. <laughs> Sorry. Break for stretching. Stretch break. <laughs> okay. Back. We're back. A lot of companies actually do that. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of shifts, they have their people gather around and they really? all stretch you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smart. Okay. So almost halfway between these two, just slightly off center. I'm going to go right about here and just below that line there, the top of that one. You can use this brush to kind of do your center line, too. Just tap in down, a line down. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to start this one because I want it to be about the same um, same color here as I'm using. So I just want to use the same color over here. And I want it to be um, kind of solid around the around the middle part here. So think about a pine tree. Some of these branches are going to be coming straight at us. And those branches that are coming straight at us are going to look like a small line in the middle of our branch. So we wanna have the branch center be more compacted. And so all these branches that are kind of in the middle here that are coming straight at us are gonna be filling in the center and then we're going to see the branches that are stretched out away from us and um, to the sides of us coming out the sides here and down. So, so was, right here in the middle, just be sure that you've got, you've got it more compact right here. I was too zoomed in for the hand gesture, sorry. Do we want an instant replay? <laughs> no, yeah. but I mean, we, we joke about it, but it huh. you don't know how many people really appreciate, honestly, that you do that because it helps visualize. The, the yeah, the, the, the I know I do these weird and, things, but yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, it does. It, it, it works. Mm -hmm. If it works, it's not I have to weird. think of it. Yeah. It helps me. That's why I do it. Okay, so as I go down, now I'm going to go back to this one here. I kind of skipped over here. And be sure you're spraying. Get some of that blue with my pink here and my gray. And the color, you know, it just... Uh, the intensity of the color, the saturation of the color should be just a little bit darker than the ones that are in this middle area here. So it's kind of closer to these two along the edge, actually. But actually, these are darker than these two are just a little bit. So, um, And I'm seeing a lot of this pink in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and keep adding like pink, get some white here white and blue with that gray yeah that's good okay so and this about right in here it should start going off the canvas or close to the edge of the canvas right in there And don't make them symmetrical, so make sure that you're kind of leaving odd numbered branches on either side, you know, so that they're not like matchy matchy, because that'll make them look not realistic. Your brain will try to make them matching, so if you let yourself just go with it and not like f consciously think about it, you'll end up with a tree that looks perfectly symmetrical and matches on both sides. <laughs> Because that's just what your brain tries to do. It tries to create patterns, and it it will do it for you while you're painting without you even knowing. So you're going to have to, like, consciously be aware of what patterns you're making here and force yourself to kind of create random patterns and don't go straight across, but kind of come skip down and 
do another one that's a little bit farther down. Maybe do kind of some that are like in the middle of right there so that you leave a little bit of room for them. And I probably should have put this a little closer to the edge of the canvas because in the picture it's going off the edge, but that's okay. How, okay, we're at 7 o'clock. All right, I'm making good time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right about here I'm going to start to really go a little bit darker. And a little bit more blue. And these are, by the time they get down this far, you're kind of going almost straight down or kind of, you know, they're, they're starting to angle down a little bit more. And again, going just like we did over here, going in here and darkening up the center of the trees a little bit just to make sure that those center parts of the trees have a little bit more saturation, a little bit darker color because they've got denser leaves. And that's pretty good. Okay, and then I'm just going to take this color, this light blue-gray, and just cover the whole rest of the canvas down here. So right about in here, it just starts to fill in totally, and the whole rest of this is going to be dark down in here. And I'm going to fade out this edge, even though I'm going to I'm going to put trees there. I'm just going to fade out that edge. But this area here is darker. And let's go ahead and just kind of tap in some random, really dark shapes. I'm not even really making like trees, but just kind of tapping in kind of a darkish shapes there just to kind of break up that area so it's not like a solid color. Okay, so that's good. We'll put a little bit of fog over this area here so it'll get it'll get the same treatment that we did up here, but I'm going to make these a little bit darker going off the edge here. Okay, pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and do continue this one here. And this is another like really large one. It's got a lot of branches that are kind of coming upward. It's kind of really pretty arc to the branches. Hmm. See what I'm doing? Creating a pattern. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. You're gonna do it without if you don't <coughs> if you don't think about it, if you don't stop yourself, you're gonna that's what's gonna happen. So gotta break it up. Gotta And looking at the reference photo will help too. So, you know, try to look at the photo. I'm not like doing a faithful representation of these trees by any means. <laughs> They're not exact. And just Getting them close. And these are getting really faded over here, so I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more of my blue and mix that in with these. And again, it's gone fairly wide here, so. This is probably another tree. That's what it is. It's another tree right here. That's why it looks so wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another tree right here. That makes more sense. Okay. Yep. And then I'll just keep on keeping on here with this one. And then the 
rest of this is going, disappearing behind my white fog. So I'm just going to kind of fade out the bottom of that a little bit. <clears throat> This picture was probably taken on Oak Island. You think? Yeah. yeah. Early in the morning, you know, you see some of those scenes. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, uh, what's his name out there looking for Bobby Dazzlers? <laughs> Over there. <laughs> so real quick, can mention patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yeah, I already mentioned it, kind of. Oh, you did while I was yeah. out? Mm -hmm. Of course you did. I have one job. Sorry. And you take my job? Thanks. I did. Okay, yeah. well, there it is. I put it on screen. Good. Ha. Huh. Thanks. And then also down below, the links to the brush guys, if you need some of these sweet brushes. Yeah. Check it out. What are you using right now? Switched. This is the six, the 12 Bright. 12 Bright. So yeah, down below, there's a... The, they're in the code Angela Fine Art. Mm -hmm. All one word, 5% off. And they know that she sent you. Yes, if you use the code, they'll know that I sent you. You save money. She gets a little commission. Yes. Everybody's small, happy. But it's, yeah. Nobody gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no. We hear great things from people who get... <coughs> Who order from them and get the brushes in yep. relatively quick time, and especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're good to work with. They are definitely good. Okay, so going just inside right here, going to right about there, then going just a little bit, a little bit darker. This is this is too dark right here, so I'm just going to go over it with this lighter gray color. I don't really love the shape of this tree here. I think I kind of need to curve up the branches a little bit more than I did. Okay, that's better. And again, I want it to kind of fade out right here at the bottom, so using the lighter color down toward the bottom will help with that. So this is the uh, ultramarine blue and white, and then the uh, the gray. I'm gonna go back to this angle brush. I feel like I liked it better. <laughs> we'll see. I may just be remembering wrong, but I felt like I got a little bit more control over it when I was tapping with it. It's not as fuzzy, but let me do this. Start over with this brush. Okay. So I'm using the very tip of the brush just to kind of tap in the little branches. There we go. And the more that I I kind of turn it towards myself, like the tip down, and I can get smaller, a little bit more controlled leaves, and I can also kind of pull down a little bit, turn it. Yeah, that's better, just a little bit faster. Holds more paint too. So I don't have to reload as often. Okay, so somewhere in there, it's going to kind of meet up with this one, and they're going to kind of just disappear down in here. I'm going to go ahead and just dab in leaves, branches. 
because there's smaller trees that are going to be kind of covering in front of these, so I do want some stuff happening here, but I want this light enough that there, the darker trees will show up against it, so it's still fairly light. That's why I lightened up this one, because I've got a darker tree that's supposed to go in front of it, so I didn't want it too dark. And the this color kind of shows in right here. And then as we get down this bottom area, we're actually seeing just a little hint of green. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding just a little touch of yellow in with this gray. That will give us a little bit of a greenish tint. Yeah, that's nice. I like it. And down here. Getting a little bit of the lighter color. The top part of the tree. Right in here. And you'll kind of develop your own way of doing pine trees. The more you do them, the kind of more comfortable you'll get with it. There's kind of a knack to it. it. Takes a little bit of time to get used to them, but mainly just want to have kind of fuzzy, fuzzy tips and kind of more of a solid in the middle. So this is not working on this tree. There we go. And again, making sure they're not symmetrical. I think that that's, I think that's where people go wrong the most is like making their pine trees really obviously perfectly symmetrical and that that throws off the realism. Just gotta have them can be different on both sides, a little bit dark, a little bit light, kind of make sure your branches are not even on both sides. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and do the, and I'm gonna get a little bit of light color and kind of cover up this one a little bit. right here that are almost as faded as these two. Darker in the middle. There we go. So it should kind of match up to where this one fades out here on the side. A little bit too dark. So these need to be faded. And 
this brush is, hmm. I don't know. It's all right, sometimes it's giving me too big of a brush stroke here where I want it a little bit finer, but it's close. Okay, so these two should match, meet up right here and kind of just dissolve into a lot of nothing. And again, like I did over here, just kind of tap them in. Okay, so looking good. I'm going to get this larger brush here. And I'm just going to make up some of this gray with the blue and just fill in the whole rest of the bottom of this with that. Get a little bit darker at the very bottom. Puckers, good. Yeah, here you go. <clears throat> what you doing? Oops, got a little bit of pink there. I didn't want that. Ultramarine blue and white. I need to spray. The titanium and white and ultramarine blue. I'm gonna wipe most of that out of my brush. Make sure these are dry. This is not dry down here. I'm gonna have to be careful. And I'm gonna get some zinc white too. So I've got a little bit of both. I can do it over this guy. So this guy's ready to go. I'm gonna Fade him out, just lightly towards the bottom of these. Fade them out a little bit. Oops, almost to wet a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more of the blue. fade out totally like we did up here just want it to kind of soften up a little bit just a little bit towards the bottom you can do it over the whole thing if you got it a little bit too dark just depends on you know what you think on yours I'm gonna do the whole thing on this one though because I feel like it's just a little bit too dark it'll fade it out a little bit make it look a little bit more foggy and very light pressure here. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. Just fading it out. Okay. It's good. Almost done. Alright. Brush strokes look interesting on the screen. What brush strokes? These ones? Down in the bottom, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get them very even. Alright, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make up some more of this because I got it. It's a little bit light. Got a little bit of the other colors in it. And some yellow so it's just slightly green so I have this black with a little bit of the yellow in it to make it green 
burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and Indian yellow hue. Adding a little bit of water to make it a little bit more. The it'll come off the brush a little bit easier if you have a little bit more fluidity to the paint. It's a little bit more. There we go. Get a little bit more of that blue and yellow to make it a little bit more green here. I have my brush loaded up pretty thick with paint. These are going to be my last little ones. I want them to be nice and dark on the top. Okay, we'll see how this goes. So right in here. Oh yeah, that's showing up. So it should be... I'm actually a little bit far over. Let me... Well, it's too late now. Right in here. And there's a small one in here too. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of these darker ones. Even though there's not that many in our photo. Do one here. One here. One a little bit higher. Bob Ross made it look so easy, didn't he? Just like Tapped it like two seconds and he had like a forest. <laughs> Swear I still haven't figured out exactly how he did it. But this is getting there. It's getting close. <clears throat> I like the I like the distance we're getting. We're getting good depth having this different layers of trees here. That's the whole idea. And I think a lot of it has to do with using that blue, the background blue, in our trees itself, and that helps them fade into the background. What you doing over there? Puppy cam? Oh, you're just doing side cam. Oh, no, did I hit side cam? Mm hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah, side cam is still on. While we're writing puppy cam. Mm hmm. Alright. I'm a professional. And. Action. Oh, hi, puppers. Hey, Pickles. Liam calls him Pickles. It's the cutest thing ever. Our little grandson. Three-year-old. Hi, Pickles. Pickles is one, one and a half. And he has a weird name because I'm weird and <laughs> we were going to name him Fitz. And then when we went and saw him for the first time, we came home and made Pickles. I was like, Pickles is a cute name for a dog. Maybe we should just add it to the And Everybody is like, what is his name? <laughs> but they like it. It's a cute name. Mm -hmm. I like it. It fits him. He's a good, good dog. We had a health scare this Christmas. And fortunately, he's doing much, much better. Basically, back to normal. Driving Mark crazy at night. <laughs> I'm going to do another tree on this side, even though it's not in the picture, just because I want to. I'm going to do one right in here. Mm 
It does feel like it needed something in that area there. It's dark enough that this is not showing that much over here, so I love it. Should have gone a little bit darker right here, so I'm going to have to kind of figure that out. Darken that area up. getting my February schedule out here in a couple days so be looking for that if you want to see what we're going to be painting in February if you're not part of our newsletter we send it out the whole schedule out in our newsletter so you can have it and refer to it Brennan does a great job and he links all the videos and puts all the dates and times and everything in a in our newsletter so if you want to have that and also get a free color um, what is it color chart uh, template you can join our website at our newsletter at thinkfulart.com that's our website so and we set out you know what we're working on that we don't spam you I promise we just once a week Sometimes if we've got something special going on, we'll send out one more than once a week, but usually just once a week and let you know what's happening in that week's videos and if we've got anything special going on. And like I said, we'll be sending out the schedule this Friday. So if you want that, the February schedule, you can join our newsletter and you'll have a really handy little schedule to check out. We also have a calendar on our website that has links to our schedule too. So if you ever kind of, you know, wonder what we're working on, you can check out. There's all kinds of information on our website and an FAQ page that has like frequently asked questions and different answers to how to use traceables and all that kind of stuff. What colors I use, where to, where to buy stuff, that kind of thing. There's all kinds of different I'm just going to go ahead and put a tree here. Why not? There's another feature that I've directed people to before, which is the uh, links to the traceables through your website. No, you can, I don't do that anymore. You don't? No. Oh. My my search engine wasn't working. so. Well, because you could look at the pictures and click on it. It, the, it, the search engine wasn't working, so we didn't, uh, we didn't yeah, do it I, anymore. I got that. Yeah. So what you're saying is... It's not there. The search engine didn't work. Yeah. Okay. We, we didn't give you the memo, apparently. No, I <laughs> wasn't in, I wasn't in that no. team no. meeting, apparently. No. Mm. <laughs> okay, so there we go. And I think I will um, probably do one last thing of fog because you can see that, you know, these are a lot darker than in our photograph. I'm going to have to let them dry, though. <laughs> okay, well, we had some questions okay. that have fallen off the queue, so uh -oh. <laughs> I'll get the one that's still there for now. Okay. <clears throat> I want to paint my own stuff. I don't have references, but I'm struggling with it. Any tips? Uh, your problem is that you don't have references. That's why you're struggling. 100%. Yeah, so. That's it. So they want to know, you know, how... You know, how do you go about get good references? Getting your references. Oh, get how to get how to get references? Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. Yeah, look for. Um, you can just Google royalty free or public domain. Google Images has um, public domain. A lot of museums will have public domain, um, like older paintings, anything over a hundred years old. Like as far as a painting goes, you can use. If you're not selling it, you can use it fair use. Um, laws usually generally like allow you to use pretty much any 
um, images for educational purposes. Um, so you can just kind of do a Patreon or, you know, Pinterest search and find stuff as long as you're not selling it. Um, you're, you're okay to mm-hmm. do that as far as, you know, don't, don't, don't quote me on it, but I think, I think <laughs> that's yeah, as far as I understand with fair use, you know, schools and things, they, they go to museums and they use, um, artwork to learn, you know, from, so you can do that. That's an option. Um, but yeah, but you're, you're, you, what happens when you are not having a reference photo is that you are using your memory. And if you don't have a photographic memory, which most people don't, um, you're basically relying on symbols that your brain has memorized probably when you were five or six, when you were learning language, um, for different things. So trees and clouds and things, you know, if you close your eyes and visualize an object of some sort, um, that's what you're going to end up painting. (laughs) So if you don't have a photographic, um, you know, perfect rendition of the object in your brain memorized, which most of us don't do that because unless you've painted it multiple times or trained yourself to learn, you know, a certain thing and kind of know the dimensions of it and things. Um, but most people won't have that kind of a memory of, of things. And so then you're just basically going to be painting something that (coughs) looks out of memory that looks oftentimes kind of juvenile because you're actually using memories from when you first, you know, stored the word for, you know, whatever it is you're painting. So that makes sense. That's kind of in a, in a short explanation what happens when you're trying to paint without a reference photo. You know, you there are artists that can do it, and that's great for them, but they've trained to do that. They've learned it over years, you know, or they have some sort of a, you know. And I will say the master's photographic memory but they use models and yeah right they went outside and they painted nature and stuff like that because they didn't have iphones and Mm -hmm. where they could take pictures and bring it back to their studio right right if they did they probably would have and they use models and you know things like that so um yeah you have to have a reference or some sort of model of some sort there's uh, i i would say you know just don't don't do that to yourself (laughs) i mean now, granted, there are some people that say, you know, if you, you know, if you want to make pure art or whatever, you know, that you, you use your memory and that that is a form of artwork that it would be, you know, very stylistic. So it would be your own unique take on the world. It would be your own memories of things and it will be very unique to you and very like interesting, I think. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. If you do that, you know, um, you're going to make some really unique art that is based on your memories of things. And that's okay, too. Um, it won't be realistic looking, probably, but that's okay. You know, like it doesn't, who says that it has to look realistic? You know, art can be whatever you want it to be. So um, do it, you know, do what makes you happy. Okay. We got another question. Sorry, I know. That's a long, I always get, <laughs> I get tied up. Sorry. I try. Uh, so we had uh, so in your in the beginning of your art journey, mm-hmm. did you take notes? Like, did you write down uh, this is what happens when I mix this color, or this is what happened when I you know put this much pressure on a brush? Such I didn't make those kind of notes necessarily. I did make color notes though. I would whenever I painted something, I would or sketched something I and painted it. I I'm going to make these a little bit more green here. So I'm adding a little bit of blue blue and yellow to this. Um just blue, just ultramarine blue and yellow so that I'm making like a tealish color. Just making these a little bit darker. I feel like they were a little bit light. Um so yeah, the the when I when I first started, I I did a lot of woodcraft type paintings and stuff, and so I would always um, when I would make my sketch my sketch and then um, paint it, I would write metis- meticulous notes on what colors I used and things and where I used them and point them out and stuff in the picture. So um, if you're do you know if you're painting along, I would say you can take screenshots of you know the. Um, 
the paintings and print them out and make notes, or you can just kind of make notes in a notebook with rough sketches, whatever you want to do. But, but yeah, I, I think it's very, very helpful to make notes. Um, okay. And whatever works for you, you know, whatever you want to remember and how you, you know, how it'll be beneficial for you to remember things. Okay, next question is, what subject do you find hard to paint? Um, I mean, I there, I don't paint uh, portraits. Like, I don't, I I don't necessarily probably. Well, yeah, they are kind of more difficult. They're just more like exacting. You have to have, you know, to get a good portrait, you just have to have a really. Um, it's just a different kind of way of painting. I like more of intuitive, like these kind of paintings where I can just kind of dab and dot, and not really worry about the exact, um, the exact picture or the exact form. And with, with portraiture, you have to be exact, you know, one little millimeter off and the nose doesn't look like that person anymore, you know, kind of thing. So it just stresses me out. I just don't like it. <laughs> I just, I haven't ever really enjoyed portrait painting, so I just don't do it. <laughs> And, you know, I just, I've found the more that I've painted, the longer I've painted, that the, the way to not burn out. And I have burned out. I, I went two years without painting once, um, is to paint what you love. <laughs> Make sure you're always painting something that you're really excited to paint. Don't paint stuff that just, you know, just be just, a, you know. I mean, when you're learning, yeah, you know, sometimes you have to, but... But for the most part, try to find stuff that you're excited about to paint and that you'll have a much, much better type of it. So, yeah, that um, I used to be a little bit intimidated by painting water. I still am not super comfortable with landscapes just in general because I didn't do a lot of them when I was like learning. I did um, or not learning. But, you know, when I first started painting, I did more florals and stuff like that. So I'm just kind of adding different colors here. Sorry. Well, I'm. Talking. Um, a little bit of pink here. Just adding different colors in here to kind of give them a little bit different tones here and there. Nothing major, just kind of adding little bits of color very transparently so that they're kind of. I'm just waiting for this to dry, really. That's what I'm doing. So I'm messing with this stuff up here that's dry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, okay, so that's it. Yeah, like water, painting water and painting landscapes are still kind of a little bit tricky for me at times but I'm getting better at it the more I do it the better the more comfortable I get with it so okay we got another question that came up what is the best way to get over intimidation of painting I need a way to just get started thank you so this is kind of the similar to what was yeah, asked earlier, we were already but, talking about mm -hmm. yeah so Kind of summarize again. I'm sorry, the person I believe came in later after after I answered so, it. Yeah. Um, well, the um, one thing that I found, you know, when I kind of got uh, um, kind of blocked or whatever, I had you know I had a time period after a friend of mine died that um, I just I didn't want to go in my studio. <laughs> it took me about six months, and I. I kind of was in a funk for quite a while, and I just didn't want to paint. Every time I came in here, it just made me sad because I'd think of her. And so what I did is I made an appointment um, with a friend of mine who painted, and I went out and painted with her. I, so I got out of my normal studio space and painted with my friend, and she had a studio in town, Lane. Shout out to Lane. She's a teacher now in a school, so... She moved. Sad. But um, anyhow, she she really, like, just, just making a schedule, just making a date for myself to sit down and paint. And I didn't have to, you know, I didn't put any, like, time constraints on myself or, like, you know, have to do any particular thing. So I would just, like, bring my paints and have a project in mind and work on it um, while I was with her and talk and just kind of, I don't know, it really helped me get out of my funk and enjoy painting again, you know. So, um, 
and again, I, I mentioned earlier, like I, I did a whole thing about, you know, other stuff, but that's another thing that helps is just to kind of make a schedule and, and don't, um, don't worry too much about your results. I think that that's another thing, you know, when you're, when you're just starting out, it's just kind of don't let yourself be a beginner, just kind of sit down and work on something for five minutes. And usually if you at least get going on something, you'll continue it, but it's the starting that's usually a problem, you know, for people. And also it helped me to have like a set space to have my paints set out so that I could sit down and easily work on them and then leave them and not have to clean up every time. So if you have a room or someplace where you can leave your paints out, that's really, really beneficial. Um, for years I painted in and left, had to, you know, clean up after myself in between paintings and it was real pain. So, um, and usually our kitchen table ended up being my studio for a while, for many, many, many years. Until we kicked some kids out of the house. Exactly. Or the, out of their playroom. Yes, but yes, my oldest went to college, and yeah, exactly. All right, so just kind of softening up the bottoms of these trees with a little bit of that light blue and white. And this is zinc white, not titanium white. The glaze. And I think we're about done. I like it. This was fun. And I went ahead and like added a little bit of the blue back down in that area just to kind of bring it down. But I think we, I think we did it. We <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I think you did. Like it. Add a little bit of this pink and. Pink and white and blue. Well, I had to do too much of that pink in there. My glaze is all gone. There we go. I'm just going to pull in some pink from the side out over my tree there. All right. I don't love this tree. I don't know what it is about it, but I'm not in love with it. I think it just needs to be wider, probably, but let me see. I don't want to mess up what I've already done, so I don't want to do too much with it. What time is it? Okay. Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good on time. We are... the fan brush back to the fan brush just widening up this tree a little bit i feel like it's just a little keep, bit too narrow at the top there keeping everybody on their toes tonight with the brush changes i know sorry fan brush angle brush stippler just back and brush. forth yeah i know i can't decide i haven't decided which one i liked better <laughs> it's but when it comes down to it it like you said so many times before it's what that person feels the most comfortable yeah. with using to right. get the effect they're looking for. Yes, exactly. So you may not have the exact brush that Angela is using, but that doesn't mean you can't get the same look. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just experiment. Different brushes do, you know, different things, but they'll all get you there eventually. It may just take longer with certain brushes, you know, if you use a smaller, smaller angle brush. It was taking me a little bit longer, but I was having a little bit more control than with the fan brush. So it just kind of, you know. Whatever works. Okay, I like it. I like that better. It's just like a little bit fuller. Filled it out a little bit more. And yeah, I think that's good. Let me sign it and we'll be done.
Super chat. Excellent. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. time for so super chat. Like here. <clears throat> All right. So the first super chat came in earlier, and it fell off our queue. So, Uh-oh. but that's okay. I I took a picture of it as a backup. Thank you. Uh, it's from Cindy, and she says thank you for that inspirational message, Aww. Angela, and reminding us. It's okay to try, fail, practice, and have fun. Yep. You're a great teacher and mentor. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad that resonated. I agree. <laughs> what was and, the name? Uh, that was from Cindy. Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. And then we had one from Carol. says, thank you for sharing your time and talent. You are such an inspiration Enjoyed being with you both for the last five oh, years. Whoa. Looking forward to 2022. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. That's amazing. You said she's been with us through thick and thin. That uh, mm. that shows real dedication because our older videos were pretty terrible. Well, I mean, quality. <laughs> five years ago, I was definitely thinner. <coughs> so she's just thin and then thick and thicker. I think is how she's following us. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I'm I'm with you there. <laughs> right with you. <laughs> as I've said before, I think God knew what he was doing when he made us have failing eyesight as mm. we got older. Because he knew we would not want to see it. <laughs> okay, this question in from moderator. Okay, how many more times do you think she'll pick up the brush? <laughs> <laughs> hey Beth. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> for real, just just for that, I'm gonna say I'm done. <laughs> I signed it really lightly there, but I think you can see it. So, ah, this was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. I think I probably could have made this tree a little bit taller, maybe moved all of them just up just slightly. I feel like it's kind of a little crowded down here, but it's close. So we got it there. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching with us today. Appreciate you, as always. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, really helps YouTube know that we're doing a good job and that they should suggest our videos when you um, like them. So it really is important. Um, and also commenting makes a big difference too in the same way and then also just sharing it with friends if you've got somebody that you know that kind of likes to paint um, sharing it on social media there's a really easy little share button there you can post it on your social media let people know what we're doing it really helps us out a lot so thank you guys so much for watching tonight and we'll be back on Saturday with another video those who are part of our patreon crew we're going to be finishing up that painting that i showed you earlier in their ten dollar think thursday group um and yeah that's it we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching bye